everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, really excited to share with you these four programs that we uh, know will benefit your business. Uh, so thank you all for taking the time to join us. We promise to uh, maximize your time and, and get you out of here right on time. I'm Rachel with the Vista Chamber of Commerce, and we're Glad to partner with organizations like the San Diego North EDC to put together programs like this. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the Vista Chamber of Commerce, please check out our website. I'll put it in the chat. It is under construction, but there's lots of good info there. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And I'll kick it back to you, Eric. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through four um, uh, opportunities for uh, manufacturers from other companies as well. So uh, if you're in R&D or if you're in prototyping, don't feel like that this is inappropriate. If you're not in any of those industries, but if you have a circle of influence in North County, we're glad to share with this information with you so that you can get it out. Um, just kind of to go through the order of events, uh, I'm not gonna do lengthy introductions of people, uh, but we're gonna start off with uh, Jonathan Sievers. He is with um, the state of California, and they're gonna go through one of the economic development um, uh, programs that the state has, the Cal Competes Grant, and walk you through that so you can be thinking about that for your company and how to prepare for the next round of Cal Competes uh, grants. We're then going to kick it over to uh, Chris uh, Sangster. Chris is with CMTA. I always get that screwed up. So, um, and he's going to walk you through a, a program called the Employment Tra Training Panel. That has been a program that's been around the state for a long time. Uh, it carries with it um, uh, a, a reputation that it might be a little bit harder to access and sometimes more uh, more hassle than it actually tends out to be worth. Uh, but I think what Rob's and Rob's organization brings is a pretty unique and um, smart way of accessing those funds uh, to help support training and on-the-job training with your company uh, in a way that's really cost-effective and can leverage uh, Rob's expertise. Uh, next up will be Chris Nansen. He is with San Diego Gas and Electric. And SDG and &E has a number of programs that are very applicable to small and medium-sized manufacturers in terms of lowering your energy costs and, and trying to identify ways to achieve greater energy uh, efficiency. And uh, last but certainly not least uh, is Linda Kurakawa. Uh, Linda is with um, Miracosta College. She runs a really innovative program over there, uh, which looks at workforce training for manufacturers. Um, but Linda is going to also speak more broadly to opportunities to partner with community colleges up here in um, North County uh, to meet workforce development and workforce training needs. So uh, with that, I'm going to kick it over to Jonathan. Uh, when Jonathan tells me to share screens, uh, I will and um, uh, we'll go from there. So again, thank you for joining. And Jonathan, uh, the floor is yours. I'm ready to go whenever you are. Perfect. I will go ahead and share screen here uh, as I do it. And let me go ahead and get that up. And everyone should see. Uh, just a moment. Sorry. Slideshow. There's too many things on my screen. Uh, there we go. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. I did my introductions and Jonathan, the floor is yours. Perfect. So hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Sievers. I'm the specialist for the California Competes Tax Credit Program. Uh, it is a program put on through the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development for the state. Um, so Eric, if you advance the next slide, I will go over the agenda for today. So um, this would be the agenda for the full presentation that we normally do uh, before each application round. We um, usually do like three or four webinars uh, going over this, uh, this exact presentation, but a more lengthy version. Um, today, due to time, uh, we're gonna do a shorter presentation where we're gonna go over the program information and evaluation criteria. And then we're gonna go over the deadlines and uh, the process in a simplified version. In the full version, I would dive into, um, you know, what each section of the application and what to expect. Um, so if you're interested in the program, we will have the dates posted and then you're more than welcome to either apply or attend a webinar to get further information. Next slide, please. All right, so the California Competes Tax Credit Program is a tax credit, is, is a credit against, Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. 
Um, is a credit against the income tax due to the franchise tax board. Uh, it is a non-refundable credit, but there is a six tax year carry forward. So if you do have some remaining tax liability or don't have any tax liability yet, you will have that credit available to you for six additional years. So there is accountability tied to this program. So you are tied to achieving contractual milestones specifically related to hiring and investing in California. Uh, and there are recapture provisions if you are um, unsuccessful in the program. Um, next slide, please. All right, so this is a uh, credit, uh, credit awards are based on 12 different factors. On screen here, you can see all of them. I'll go over a few key ones. So this is a full-time job creation program. Uh, so obviously we'll be looking at the number of jobs created or retained, you know, compensation paid to employees, the amount of uh, capital investments you'll be making in California. And then we look at other factors such as, you know, the extent of poverty or unemployment in a specific area, the overall economic impact of your quote unquote project or your growth plan, um, you know, the strategic importance of the state, you know, training op opportunities to offer to employees and promotional opportunities, that kind of thing. Next slide. All right, so GoBiz is also required to evaluate the extent to which the credit will influence the applicant's ability and or willingness to create new full-time jobs in California that might not otherwise be created by the applicant itself or another California business. So this is a critical part to the program. So essentially you are competing against every other business that applies and the businesses that are uh, usually successful are the ones that best demonstrate this point. You know, how would the jobs not be created without aid of this tax credit? And then making a good case puts you in the most competitive um, place in the program and most likely to get awarded. So um, how will this credit and more specifically the amount of credit being requested factor into the company's ability or willingness to expand in California? Um, so I will have a link to the frequently asked questions on our website later in the presentation. So that will be available to you and feel free to check out our uh, you know, frequently asked questions and this presentation will be available if you're interested. Next slide. Okay, so uh, amount of credits available. So we have funding every year uh, through 20, the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Uh, we, uh, the state of California is a fiscal year filer. Um, so we have 180 million available per fiscal year. And no more than 20% of that may go to any one business per year. So there is a cap on the amount that you can ask for. Um, it roughly equates to, um, we have uh, some carry forward from the past. So it's probably around like 45 million is the most you could ask for at this point. Next slide. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we have a total of 231 million available uh, this year. Uh, so we have three application periods per fiscal year. The first one is actually just passed. So if you look at the dates down at the bottom, um, obviously the July to August period has now concluded. Uh, the next one that you should keep on your radar is the January application period. Um, where we have $80 million available. So you'll need to apply within that window of January 4th to January 25th. And then if you are either unsuccessful in that round or wish to wait till the next round, there's another one in March um, from the 8th to the 29th. And so this cycle repeats every year. So each year we have an application period that typically starts at the end of July, the beginning of uh, January and the beginning of March. So this will repeat in the future. Okay, so the application process. Uh, the application is all online, it's all free. So the top link there is uh, to our application website. So that's calcompetes.ca.gov. Um, for any technical assistance, which includes uh, this uh, slideshow that I mentioned and uh, our frequently asked questions, that's that second link there, the business.ca.gov slash California Competes Tax Credit. And then unsuccessful applicants may resubmit applications after updating a couple of sections and you may apply as many times as you wish. We've had uh, many businesses that have applied multiple times and been awarded after multiple times of applying. Uh, like I mentioned, since every round is competitive, there's a no set you know, bar or baseline that you need to meet. So it's in relation to all the other businesses that apply. So naturally some rounds will be more competitive than others, but you can apply as many times as you wish. All right, so the application process. There are four different phases. Uh, phase one 
covers a quantitative analysis based on a cost benefit ratio. Um, phase two is more of a comprehensive evaluation. So phase one is a little bit more of a, uh, you know, mostly quantitative. And then in, we don't dive more into the qualitative factors into phase two. So if you recall from a couple slides ago, we had all 12 of those factors. Phase two is where all 12 of those would come into play. Um, and then if you are successful in phase two, uh, we will then extend to you an agreement, uh, which must be approved by a committee. So once you sign the agreement, it goes to a committee meeting. Upon approval at the committee meeting, then the agreement is now live. And then after that, uh, there is information posting. So we post a few simple things, which you'll see later in the slide on our website. Um, and then there is reporting requirements. So we do a yearly check-in to see if you are successfully on track in your project. And, uh, you know, there's agreement compliance on that front. All right, so the phase one evaluation. So like I mentioned, it's based on a cost benefit ratio. So that cost benefit ratio is on your screen right now. So it is the amount of credit requested divided by the aggregate employee compensation plus aggregate investment. Um, essentially, uh, you get to choose the amount of credit that you wish to receive for your project. So you'll notice as the amount you select or the amount that you'll be contributing. So the employee compensation is the amount you'll be paying to your new employees. And then the aggregate investment is the total amount of investment. So you can see as either the amount of credit you go down, the amount of credit requested goes down, or the amount of compensation investment goes up, the ratio decreases. So the ratio is one of the 12 factors that we look at and having a lower um, cost benefit ratio is more advantageous. And then the most advantageous businesses will be moved into phase two. All right, so there are a couple exemptions to the phase one calculation. So if you are able to certify one of these two statements, you will move into phase two regardless of what your ratio is. Um, so if you can certify the absent award of the credit, um, the company's project may or will occur in another state or there may or will be a termination or relocation of all or a portion of your employees, then you'll be uh, moved into phase two automatically. Or the other criteria is um, at least 75% of the new employees will be hired in an area of high unemployment or high poverty. So we determine uh, what high unemployment and high poverty is, which if you advance to the next slide, I'll go over. So high unemployment and high poverty, we have our technical definitions on screen. It essentially is 150% of the state average. So if your city or county falls into that definition, it will be considered high poverty or high unemployment for the program. Um, we do the list for you. There's a spot in the application you could click on to see, um, you know, if your city or county falls in that area, and then you just click a simple yes or no in the application. All right, so if you're successful in phase one and move into phase two, or can certify one of the statements that I just went over, uh, like I mentioned, phase two is the more comprehensive evaluation. So we take into account the phase one information that uh, you entered into your application. And then we also evaluate the additional factors that you see on screen. Um, I've already gone over uh, them in the past, um, but just to you know, rename a few. So we go over the extent of unemployment poverty in the area. We go over the wages and benefits of the new prospective employees, the training opportunities, strategic importance to the state and so on. Uh, and then we have the agreements phase. So. Uh, the terms and conditions of the agreements include uh, minimum employee compensation and retention period, um, a credit distribution period, and recapture provisions if the applicant fails to meet commitments. Um, so uh, on the next slide, you'll see exactly what sort of an agreement looks like. Um, so this will make a little bit more sense and I'll explain it to you. Um, and then as I mentioned, oh, um, you know, the, the agreements are approved by the tax credit committee, uh, which uh, the members are listed at the bottom there. Next slide. Um, okay, so here's an example of an agreement. So in addition to the typical boilerplate language you would expect in an agreement, we have, we give every business a chart that looks like the following. This is the example business that we use in our full presentation. Um, and as you can see, um, we uh, have a chart for it, which is laid out with each column being a, a different year. Um, so essentially what we do is we take the numbers that you put into the application, we group them by year. And then what you have laid out as your growth plan now becomes your milestones. Um, essentially what you're obligated to meet in order to gain the credit. 
So uh, to give you a simple breakdown, so if we look at the 2020 tax year, you can see that Widget must reach a total full-time employee count of 56, which resulted uh, as a net increase of eight because the base year, which was 2019, so that's sort of the starting point, um, was 48. Um, and then they must be hired at a minimum and average of 35,000 and 40,000 respectively. Uh, they did not predict any investments for this year. So their investment is zero for that year. And then if they do all of those milestones um, at the yearly check-in point, uh, they get $160,000 in credit. So as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, they asked for a total of 800,000 in exchange for this growth plan. Um, so 160,000 would be the first piece of that. Um, and then, so a common question we get at this point. So two things that are great about our program is there is some flexibility. So if you're unsuccessful in any given year, as long as you're still within the five year window, you can still uh, make up for any missed tax credit. So for example, if you missed 2020 in 2021, you make up for that, you'll still be able to claim that credit. And if you're also meet 2021 to be able to claim both. So you do have that flexibility throughout the entire agreement. Next slide. All right. So, um, Post committee approval. I mentioned that we post some things to our website. Uh, just for some clarification, we do not post everything that is in the application. We just post what you see on screen here as part of our legal requirement. So we post the business name, the primary location, the industry type that the business is in, and then the growth plan. So the you know the committed number of full time employees, the committed investments, and the amount of tax credit they got in exchange for that. Um, the link there at the bottom then takes you to the awardee list. Um, which is the comprehensive list of every business that has been awarded through the program. All right, so oversight and accountability. So the Franchise Tax Board is ultimately responsible uh, for all the oversight and accountability. Um, so they will uh, have access and will do a books and records review. So it's not a full on audit. They will just simply check the things needed to um, double check your information for the program. And then if you're found in material breach, they will inform us go biz uh, and then the committee that approved your credit will either uh, approve or deny the recapture. Um, just for clarification, uh, this is a method of last resort. It's not our goal to recapture. Uh, we'd like to see every business in our program to uh, succeed. So this is a method of last resort. Uh, so that concludes uh, our presentation. Uh, my contact information is on screen here. You, uh, The top link there has our application website. Uh, and then we have our email and phone number for all of those um, interested in reaching out to us. And then the bottom link there at the, uh, uh, the link at the bottom is access to our FAQs, this presentation that you see here, the awardee list and many more resources. Jonathan, thank you so much for that presentation. And again, uh, we'll be sending out this presentation to um, all of you that are registered and here in the meeting. And then um, you'll have all that contact information should you want to follow up uh, with GoBiz and get prepped up for um, getting applicants, applications, excuse me, uh, in, in uh, January and March. Um, we've had North County companies uh, compete and win. Uh, we know some of them uh, well, and um, we'd really encourage you, if you're looking at expansion or bringing, you know, sort of a retention opportunity, um, definitely follow up with this program. I know we've got questions in chat and we'll follow up with them here at the end when we have some time for questions and answers. With that, All I right, want to turn good. Over, and Jonathan, again, thank you so much. I want to turn this over now to Rob. Um, Rob is going to walk us through uh, ETP, which is a training program, and some of the services that CMTA offers. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and Robert, just tell me when to advance uh, slides. Rob, are you there? Okay, I'm unmuted now. There we Perfect. go. Excellent. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, before we get started, uh, uh, my name's Rob Sanger with California Manufacturers Technology Association. We're a trade association, it's been around for over 100 years. We've got um, you know, a lot of member companies that have used uh, Jonathan's program with GoBiz. It's a great program. Thanks for that great presentation, Jonathan. <clears throat> before I get started, um, you know, Let's talk about coffee, really, because I think that's what we're all thinking about this morning. I'm drinking Major Dickinson this morning. I don't know what you guys are drink, drinking, but uh, put it in the chat because I'm always looking for new coffee brands. Um, but I had to do a Google search this morning because I've been drinking Major Dickinson for a long time, and I've been curious about the name. And it's Major Dickinson was a former Army officer, and he helped to um, 
to, to get that um, coffee blend just right. Um, as, it, as a former Navy, Naval officer, I know coffee is very important. So I hope you guys are all enjoying yours this morning. All right, let's go ahead and start. Um, so we're gonna talk about a little bit about the employment training panel this morning. What are the requirements for getting these CTP funds? And there's two ways to apply. Um, the direct version where you get your own contract. Um, the, the one company in your area that I'm working right now with is Hunter Industries, Scotty Lombardi. They've got a direct um, contract on, I'll be talking a little bit about that. And he's a great reference if you have questions, um, you know, if you, if you want a kind of a direct contact in your area. And then there's another way to go through our association where we have direct, we have funding for many companies and it's a much expedited process. And then I'll touch briefly on some COVID-19 hiring incentives from the ETP. And those also have the direct versus the CMTA funding option. Um, so, so that gets a little tricky, but uh, there's two, two different um, funding, uh, two different programs and two different ways to apply. And then I'll touch a little bit about um, some federal grant opportunities. There's a current West LA Department of Labor apprenticeship grant, and um, they're looking for companies that are interested in you know, using, starting an apprenticeship program, and expanding an apprenticeship program. And then there's another new exciting opportunity that just came up on Friday that I didn't get a chance to incorporate, but it's a new federal, um, grant similar to this West LA college grant. Um, it's $150 million in federal funding. Uh, any state, any entity in the state can apply. It could be a community college, it could be CMTA, it could be a group of employers. Um, so I'll touch on that as well. All right, next slide. Uh, this is the hiring incentive. I call it a hiring incentive because really it, it, it's paying you up to 2K per employee, 2000 per employee that you either bring on uh, as a new hire, but probably more, more realistically, you're, maybe you're bringing on people that have been furloughed either way. Um, so it's a pretty significant hiring incentive of $2,000. Um, but the, um, the catch on this one is you have to be in the proper NAICS code. And you can see the NAICS codes below. So you just have to see if you match up with one of these NAICS codes. And then if you do, um, feel free to give me a, a, give me a call or shoot me an email. I can kind of work you through it. But you can either apply directly to the state for up to $200,000, that would be, you know, you'd have to hire 100 people, which is a big, obviously a big, a big hurdle. Um, or you could, you could hire less, but then you'd earn less. Um, but you'd have to go through that whole process. Or we just, CMTA just got funded on Friday for $200,000. Um, so we can do onesie, twosie. You know, if you're just going to hire one or two people, we can get you um, not that full $2,000 credit, um, but we, there's some cost for the training piece, which is four hours of training that CMTA would provide. So um, it's a good incentive. And it's, it's much different than ETP has ever done. They've never done anything like this before. It's brand new. So there's, you know, I, I really think it's, if you're in these NAICS codes if, and you're going to be hiring even one person, I think it's worth talking, talking about. Okay, so that's the COVID hiring sets. Let's go on to the next slide. Um, this is just a little uh, bit about the multiple employer contract. Um, it's, it's our flyer basically about it. And this is the, where you don't have to apply directly to the state for the, for the standard ETP funds. And so the beauty of that is uh, you can get started in as little as a few days. I send you a three page form, you fill it out. If you're eligible, it's auto approved. I send you a contract that same day to, to, to participate. And then you can earn up to, you know, about $50,000 in training. <coughs> and you can even go retroactive a bit because our, our, our funding was, fun, our, our project was funded in February of this year. So you can go all the way back to February if you have your training tracked. Um, and you need, a, you need to track the training in some sort of a roster, a paper roster. Um, and that's sort of the proof that the training took place. And the reimbursement rates around 18 to 19 dollars an hour per person per hour. Um, so uh, it's a really expedited process. A lot of companies use it to get started to see, ah, is ETP worth it? Uh, can we do this? Are we organized enough within our company? Is the training that we provide is it um, you know is it uh, eligible? Um, so I don't have time to go through you know all this all these this whole flyer, but basically. Most training is eligible as long as it's more of in a classroom type training um, basis. Um, they do allow for some one-on-one -on -one training on the job training, but that's very small amount of that. And also 
computer-based training pays at a much lower rate. So if there's no instructor, it's, it's not as valuable. So a lot of companies use it to train uh, internally in the company using subject matter experts within the company to train their employees. Now you can also use out, outside third-party trainers. And we have a lot of trainers that we can um, you know, refer to you as well. So we don't get paid for that, which is just a, just a service. But if, if you do need trainers, we have um, trainers on that, that are um, available as well to help you out. Next slide. Uh, this is just a little bit about the live web-based online training that we provide. Now, you, you know, if you're using the multiple employer contract, um, you, you know, we have trainers that, um, that can provide that. Uh, so just want to let you know that, that we're a resource for that as well. But if you do have an ECP contract or even using our multiple employer contract, you can use, you know, Udemy, you can use all these online uh, training platforms that are out there as well. Okay, this is just a little bit about the federal grants. Um, this is the, uh, the department, uh, West LA College received a 12 million Department of Labor grant to advance uh, manufacturing companies in California. It's more focused on apprenticeships. Um, this, is, this is the example I was telling you about. There's a new funding round out on as well. So um, I know Linda is gonna talk about uh, the community college partnerships. And um, so um, that might be a good uh, you know, thing to start looking at partnering with your community colleges and with CMTA as well. If you have uh, any interest in these federal grants, feel free to contact us we're kind of building partnerships between colleges, other companies that other manufacturing companies and um, um, certification agencies. Uh, and, and this next round of funding does not have to be apprenticeship focused, but this particular one in West LA College is apprenticeship focused, either pre-apprentice or apprentice. It, um, so it has, you have to have some interest in a, kind of a more formal apprenticeship program, but it does help manufacturing companies find talent through the local community colleges and the workforce investment board programs, helps them, you know, really develop more formal skill sets and leadership skills. And, um, you know, and, and there are also some um, tooling you and community college courses, uh, the related and technical instruction involved. So um, that that's available that can really help you formalize um, your training for your employees. Okay, and then um, this is just a, uh, the flyer about the, um, about the uh, West LA College program. Feel free to contact me, you can, um, uh, as you can see on this, it says Deborah Shepard, you can contact her as well, but um, feel free to contact me. I'm uh, kind of the marketing uh, liaison rep with the manufacturing community for uh, this, this training grant. Okay, and that's just kind of an example of, of um, uh, one of our employers, e j Gallup Winery. Um, we've worked with them for a long time. And um, I just kind of put this slide together to give you an example. Now, you know, this is going to sound like a lot of big dollars. We also work with small companies as well. But just to so, show like uh, some of these employers over the years, how much money they earn. Um, we started working with Gallup Winery back in 2008. And back in that time, they had the, the, the fund was a little more flush and you could go up to a million dollars in uh, reimbursement for a single employer contract. So we, and this is the amount earned. We, we, we earned, uh, we not only were awarded, but, but we helped them earn the million dollars. And then they moved into a multiple employer contract for a few years and earned uh, 92,000. And, and again, all the way through 14, they used some more multiple employer contract funding. And then they stepped back up and did some single employer contracts. Um, and then uh, I just got them funded for another one. Um, uh, about a month ago, that's not on this slide. So you can tell there's some significant money if you just keep at it and you, a lot of companies, it's, it is a bit of a hurdle to start with a big single employer contract. So I do um, recommend most companies start with um, a smaller amount of, uh, with the multiple employer contract and see if they have the administrative capabilities of tracking the training um, and, and all the other requirements of the program so that you don't invest a lot of time and money up front and then say, oh, this wasn't a good fit. So the multiple employer con contract is a great, great way to start it out. Now, a bigger company like a Hunter Industries, like I was saying, they jumped right into a single employer contract because they were just very organized. They had an organizational development team. They had um, a learning management system that tracked all the training. So we were able to pull from that. And um, 
So it just depends. And I saw maybe there was a question that came in. <coughs> Let's see, where's my chat here? How many, how many small companies do you work with in North San Diego? Let's say 20, let's say 20. Um, I don't work with a lot of small companies in San Diego, and that's kind of one of the reasons I'm on the call. Um, and then the contact name you mentioned, Hunter Industries, I'd really like to ask about the program. It is um, Scotty Lombardi. And uh, if you email me, um, you know, I can give you his contact or some other. He's kind of the, the VP of the program. And then there's a direct person I work with within the company as well. So I can give you that. that. Um, but like I said, I don't work with a lot of small companies in San Diego, but 20 or less employees, I can work with that on the um, multiple employer contract. I would not apply for a single employer contract if you're that small. I would start with this, the multiple employer contract and see how that goes. And typically that's, that's a good fit. I'm happy to answer any other questions as well as we move on to the next slide here. Um, like I say, uh, you know, these are just a few of the programs. The ETP is a, just one of the, um, one of the programs we work with. We work with other, other, um, you know, other uh, incentives and, and programs, but that's the one I'm focusing on today. But feel free, as you, if you're a manufacturer especially, um, feel free to email me so I can get you on the list at least of companies that are interested in different programs. And you don't always have to be a member to participate in most of these programs. Thanks a lot. Great, Rob, thank you so much for that. I'll go ahead and make sure to put my contact information, and I know we've pestered you on the Zoom as well. Scotty Lombardi's on our board of directors here at the San Diego North EDC, and so we're happy to make email introductions to you. Scotty is, um, Scotty is a North County treasurer. So yeah, he's um, a big guy. I'm sure for any of the companies out there, um, for either C-suite executives or um, an HR professional, um, Scotty is, would be more than uh, happy to walk you through. Um, from the perspective, obviously, you know, uh, Scotty's worked for big and small companies, so help you really think about leveraging those TPPs depending upon your circumstance, and I'm sure he would be happy to get. Um, next up, we've got Chris uh, 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 from SDG&E. Um, they have a number of programs um, that are worth knowing about. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Chris and reshare my screen. Um, so we will uh, hear from our friendly neighborhood uh, utilities. So uh, Chris, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eric. And uh, thank you to the rest of the San Diego North EDC for putting together a great agenda, allowing me to spend some time with you this morning. Um, Robert, I'm, I'm currently drinking Coffee and Tea Collective, um, which is a little shop out of uh, North Park and downtown. Um, I went to, to school at Point Loma Nazarene University with the, the guys who own it, and it's a, a great little shop, and I'd be happy to host you down there uh, sometime in the future, so uh, once all this COVID stuff is done. But uh, before I begin, wanted to uh, let you know that all of the things that I'm going to be discussing are going to be uh, sent out with live links um, after this uh, presentation is done. So all of the blue links on my uh, presentation are links to the uh, program specific websites. Uh, so that if you want to do a little bit more homework on your own, you'll be able to, to find that. So um, once again, thank you for letting SDG&E be a part of this. My name is Chris Nansen. I'm one of the senior account executives uh, for the industrial program um, and work within business services. So uh, if you have any questions about uh, how to identify your specific account executive um, or if you have questions that we could um, address afterward, I'm going to be happy to address those. So we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Quick overview of what we're going to be discussing today. Um, I'm going to go over one of the uh, main drivers of ways that you can save money, which is participating in our energy efficiency programs. We'll talk about some of the uh, programs that are particularly relevant. Um, we'll talk about some rate resources, how to make sure you're on the best rate um, to make sure that you're, you're spending um, as little money on, on rates and billing as possible. And then um, if you haven't yet signed up for my account, we will do a quick, very quick overview of some of the benefits of that. So if you'd like to go to the next slide, we'll talk about some of the energy efficiency programs. And I can see that that slide did not translate well. So <laughs> um, no worries. It's a bit of an eye chart. I can uh, do a real high level. So for the rebate and incentive programs, the best thing that you should know is that there's really two types of programs. One is a 
instant rebate. One is more of a in-depth, uh, we call it an incentive, but it's a calculated. You get a higher incentive with a little bit more effort. So um, if we go over to the rebate side, we're looking at two distinct things. One is lighting, one is non-lighting. Um, currently for our lighting program, we have uh, T8s, high bay LEDs, interior LED troppers, which can be purchased at a qualified distributor um, with a, uh, basically an instant rebate. So it's a, a point of sale rebate that you uh, you receive if you were to purchase from one of our qualified dis distributors. Um, those distributors can be found on our website. Like I said, those links uh, will take you to those, uh, those sites. The non-lighting rebates, that's for things like food service, refrigeration, um, HVAC insulation, um, HVAC products, as well as some of our natural gas products. Um, and that is a simple mail-in rebate, um, which there's quite a few products that would qualify there. So um, if you're clicking on the website, look for the, it's called the product catalog, and you'll be able to find some more information on that. Um, lastly, like I said, the incentives are calculated. This is a uh, little bit more effort, a little bit longer lead time. And, uh, but the, the benefits are that you can save a lot of money and get a lot of incentive back. Um, right now we're offering 12 cents per kilowatt hour um, or $1.25 uh, per therm that is saved. So um, if you would like to learn more about those, uh, feel free to click around. Um, they, they do get a little bit uh, difficult. So that's where I would be happy to uh, help answer any questions on those as possible. Um, we also have some audit programs, which would be of interest. One is called the Comprehensive Audit Program. Uh, this is for facilities that are greater than 100 kilowatts in demand for three consecutive months. And this is a high level audit that can be done. Um, we, we will follow all uh, COVID protocols, but uh, there would be a qualified contractor who would come out and do an inspection and uh, assessment of your facility and make general recommendations via a report um, that will help you identify some energy efficiency options. Uh, second is a no contact virtual facility assessment for sites 300 uh, kW demand and uh, less which is great because you'll meet with our uh, contractor virtually. Um, they will do an assessment of your facility um, from their home base in Colorado and make some suggestions. And typically what we're seeing is uh, with this virtual facility audit, audit um, companies are seeing a five to 10% uh, decrease in their uh, consumption. So there's some serious savings that can be had. Um, and lastly, uh, the business energy solutions kind of takes the audit programs and the rebate and incentive programs and puts them all into one. Um, this is a uh, program where a, a contractor will come in, do an audit of your facility, make recommendations, and then actually install things that day um, if that is something that would be of interest. And the way that we've been able to make this work is that a lot of the um, widgets or fixtures that they would be installing would be of low cost or even some no cost options uh, to you. Um, if there is cost associated with those, then what you'd be able to uh, access um, is our on-bill financing program, which is the next one down. Um, this is a zero interest loan on all qualified uh, energy efficiency business improvements. And I'll give you a quick example. Say you wanted to update some of your lighting to T8s, um, but the upfront cost isn't something that you particularly budgeted for uh, that year. What you'd be able to do through our on-bill financing program is actually access some funds um, that we would give to you at zero interest. Um, and then you would uh, pay that loan off via your bill. So you wouldn't see any direct bill savings, but um, once that loan has been paid off, you would actually uh, start seeing direct bill savings, but you'd be using less energy uh, while you're doing that. So it's a great option. Um, and like I said, you pay it off directly on your bill. Um, and one thing I should mention about that is that we could do loans up to a million dollars. So some significant uh, opportunities there as well. 
Um, real quick, last two uh, I'll mention is with uh, AB802, it requires benchmarking on uh, uh, spaces greater than 50,000 square feet. Um, we'd be happy to help you out with that. We have uh, folks on staff who will help you navigate the website as well as uh, submitting all of the questionnaires that are needed for that. And finally, our Energy Innovation Center. I know that many of you have been uh, to this site and um, we're still operating, um, offering free trainings uh, virtually as well as um, there's the free tool and book lending library that you're able to uh, to stop by still that uh, is available for any member of the public or uh, contractors. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, Eric. Quick disclaimer of all of the programs that I just mentioned, a little bit of the uh, legalese here is that as a way of spurring some innovation, the CPUC has um, opted to uh, through decision 1608-019, um, option some of our energy efficiency programs out to third parties as a way to try and bring new programs to the market, some fresh uh, looks, which means that over the next year uh, or so, we're going to be uh, concluding some of our programs whilst uh, introducing new programs. So that just means that I'll have another opportunity to come and speak to you all about some of the great new programs that we, uh, we offer. Um, and we'll still be administering the programs. There will likely be a third party who will be uh, interacting with the customers. So we're looking forward to the opportunity to see some new programs and those are going to be coming down the pike very, very soon. Uh, for more information, visit our website. And Eric, will go to the next slide. All right, so we'll, we'll quickly review some uh, right resources. Uh, real high level so that we all have the same uh, knowledge is what is in a rate. It, um, sdg e bills for the cost of the electricity itself, the commodity, and the infrastructure that delivers it to you, the wires, transformers, power plants, other things. Um, there are also some charges that include taxes and fees and some of the public purpose programs that pay for those incentive and rebates programs that we just talked about. Um, but a key uh, Key fact is that uh, SDG&E does not make money off the commodity cost of energy. What you pay for energy on your bill is what we paid to source it for you. Um, so as we're looking at what rates um, really work for you, the first thing that we need to do um, is first look at your uh, annual costs. What does uh, your, your annual look of your electricity cost um, really mean? And on the bottom right corner on my screen, um, you'll see a quick comparison of what you can look at on uh, my account under our pricing plan comparison. That takes 12 months of electric use um, and uh, it allows you to choose the best plan based on um, how those different factors, the taxes, the programs, the demand charges, all of those factor into your rate. And it will show you what is your best potential option of a rate. Um, so that will be something that I would highly recommend folks take a look at is uh, go into your My Account portal and uh, check your pricing plan so that you can see what uh, your best rate uh, option would be. If you uh, need to contact your account executive, um, I'd be happy to help you figure out who that is. There are some companies who do not have an account executive, but what we do have is a business resource center who would be able to provide you all of the same information. Um, and I'd be happy to connect you with all of those. Uh, secondly, if you are looking at the best right, uh, rate for you, you need to consider if you can participate in what's called an event day. We had a couple of these back in August during the heat wave, um, and some of you who are currently participating may have seen an increase in your bills. What this is, is a, uh, it is a planned uh, premium increase on your bill to try and incentivize folks to use a little bit less um, in the instance that we had a couple weeks ago that was to try and help with load curtailment. So what was activated is called a critical peak pricing rate. Um, these events happen pretty infrequently. Um, on average, we have about three to four per year. Um, over the last month, we had seven. That just goes to show how hot it has been and how uh, strained the grid was. So as you're considering uh, what rate is best for you, you'd want to check and see if you're able to reduce load during a specific time of the day between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. 
This could be in reducing the amount of uh, work that's going on or uh, turning off lights, uh, raising the AC. Um, all of those are ways that we can reduce load. And if you're capable of doing that, then being on an event rate like a CPPD or some sort of plan, if you look at your bill that ends in P, um, that would be uh, a way to know if you're currently on it. And if you are able to reduce during those uh, peak times, it would be a, uh, a good option for you if you are able to, uh, to reduce. Um, and we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. So um, the My Account tool is a great tool for you. Um, it, like I said, you'll be able to view, um, pay your bill online. You'd be able to see your historic usage and then do the rate comparison options. Um, if you do decide to enroll in a new rate, you will be locked into that rate for one year. Um, if you recently enrolled in a new rate, you are still locked in for that year from when you, uh, when you enrolled. Um, one thing that I did also want to mention briefly before my time expires is that many customers have asked about discounts that might be available through the economic development rate. And I wanted to just mention this real quick. Um, for those of you who are unaware of this rate, it's specifically designed to help those companies that are facing a particular hardship um, by being located in San Diego. So if your company is considering moving out of San Diego um, because of financial hardships, then the economic development rate might be something of interest to you. Um, if financial hardships are a concern, I would also be happy to work with you in determining what's the best way for energy efficiency options that we can explore um, and making sure that you're on the best rate so that you are paying um, as little as, as possible. Um, there are some details into that, which um, I'd be happy to go offline and talk with folks about. Um, and with that, I'll have you advance to the last slide, which I believe is all of the contact information. So if you need uh, to email me, my email address is there. Um, check our social media feeds. Uh, I'll read off that number on the energy savings contact, which is 1-800-644-6133. Um, and that's a really good number to, to get you connected with any of our energy efficiency programs. So with that, thank you very much for letting me join and talk a little bit about our programs. I know that was a lot to take in, which is why I am happy to help you out in the future if you need anything. Thank you. Chris, thank you so much for that. We'll fix the slides before we send it out. The joys of putting four different slide presentations together, sometimes the formatting gets screwed up. And I did Not a problem. So um, with that, again, thank you so much for that. And now we're gonna turn it over to Linda Kurakawa from Miracosta College. Uh, Linda doesn't have a slideshow for us, um, but I will put up her contact information uh, after she finishes uh, what she's gonna talk to us about. And she's gonna walk you through various partnerships that are available to North County companies through our two community college districts. So Linda, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eric. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, I wanted to uh, say thank you because I know that you have uh, very, very busy times and to be able to take a moment and hear about all these wonderful opportunities uh, is not only just a great thing for you, but um, it's such your dedication to, to, to staying in San Diego and being a part of our community. So this is wonderful. Um, Miracosta is a community college and, and I emphasize the word community because all of our community colleges are there to serve the community. And so what I'm going to be talking about is often mirrored at your local uh, community college. It might be close, you might live and have your industry and your business closer to Palomar College. It might be close to Grossmont Cuyamaca Colleges, San Diego City Colleges, but all of them have uh, wonderful working relationships with each other and they all offer many things for the employers. And I think that the biggest thing that's happened lately and the biggest change is the size of our ears. <laughs> I know that sounds funny and my ears actually haven't grown except the hearing in, in terms of what we're doing to listen to industry and to make sure businesses and companies have the types of workers, have the kinds of services that will benefit you. And colleges are beginning to realize that there's been quite a gap between what you need and what we offer. Miracosta is a perfect example of that because in setting up the Technology Career Institute, 
it was our hope to be able to listen carefully to our local industry partners and create a program that was dynamic, was adaptive, flexible, accelerated, and able to pre um, um, promote and roll out skills-based training programs that served your needs, not the colleges. So that's been quite a challenge, but it's been uh, an exciting journey for all of us to do this with uh, the TCI, which is the Technology Career Institute here in Carlsbad. So the idea was to gain uh, funding from the Department of Labor or other organizations for my fee-based program that allows us to offer uh, uh, various types of accelerated training programs that gets an individual in, gets them trained and into your jobs quickly with your advice on exactly what it is that we should do to train them. And uh, we started with a machining program, we added engineering technician, we added a biomedical equipment technician, uh, we added unmanned systems, and even brew tech to make sure that we serve the needs of our community and serve the needs of the residents in our community who are looking for these exciting mid-level, high-skilled jobs that gave them um, uh, an opportunity to earn salaries that uh, um, made sure that there was um, food on their table and that their children could also go to school in this area. So um, that's what we did at the Technology Career Institute. Uh, we mostly with you. If you have programs you wish for us to design, we are all ears. As I said, our ears have gotten quite large. Uh, the other thing that we do at the community college, and again in my departments uh, specifically, is that we offer the ability for you to get low cost training for your employees. And um, we're able to partner with other colleges that have these multi-employer uh, um, accounts through ETP and we work with another college to make the paperwork easy for you and the training all done at your local community college. So if you were to come to us and say we need blueprint reading, we need supervisory skills, we need GD and T, we need uh, lean training, all of those types of programs can be done by a quick phone call and a consultation. And we can then um, sign you up and your employees up to get that training through TCI. So it's pretty easy because the paperwork on your side is very minimal and we take care of all of the logistics and all that paperwork. So that's available to you um, and we really encourage you to be able to use that, those funds that are available. You paid into them, you deserve to have the benefits of those types of training. Um, we also offer the opportunity for you to come and visit us and see our center and see the college at any point, whether you wanna see the main campus and see what we offer for credit, perhaps your employees or even you would like to continue your education or come see TCI and see what we have here. Our center has state-of-the-art equipment, robotics, automation equipment, machines, welding, um, um, electronic assembly, soldering certifications. So all those elements that you think you might need to make sure that your employees are upskilled or that you're finding new employees. Um, so that's um, some of the things that we do and can be done at some of your local community colleges that are maybe perhaps closer to you. We work together and we make sure that near uh, that Miracosta and the community colleges are training your next talent pipeline. So I don't think that there's much else I need to say. I, I am available to consult. It doesn't cost anything and it is my pleasure to do so. Perfect. Well, Linda, thank you so much. I'm going to just quickly share the screen so people can take if they want to a quick photo uh, with your contact information. So Linda can be reached at, um, that's Linda's contact information. I'll leave it up here for a little bit uh, so people can get it. And again, if there are any questions that we have in uh, chat, um, we'll go ahead and take those and I'll move over. 
Um, but there was one, in, and I'm going to uh, see if uh, Jonathan wants to take it um, real quick. Jonathan, um, we, had, we had a question that sort of focused in on um, small companies, right? So we've got a number of companies up in the Carlsbad and Business Park that might be, you know, 10 employees or 15 employees. And they might be looking to, you know, add a new product line and say expand from 15 to 20, or they might be, you know, looking at, um, you know, a, some sort of investment uh, in the six figures to add new capital equipment uh, for expansion. Um, is, is that the kind of sized company that still can compete in the Cal Competes program? Um, and, and how do you guys sort of think about um, smaller companies as you look to administer that program? Well, yeah, so a um, couple of points to that. So the program itself is open to businesses of any size in any industry, as long as they're growing in California. Um, uh, if you actually take a look, um, I'm not sure if uh, this person grabbed the content information slide, but uh, on our business.ca.gov website, we had that awardee list I mentioned. If you look on that page with all the information posted, there is a variety of different businesses uh, in a ton of industries, like over 100 industries um, in cities all throughout the state and of varying sizes. Um, it's arranged by credit request. So normally the ones at the top will be the biggest ones. But if you look and scroll down through it, um, you'll notice that there are businesses of many different sizes. So, you know, the growth plan will be very small. Um, the lowest that we've had have been an employee growth of two over the five year period, um, which is pretty manageable um, for almost any business. Um, and then now, obviously, with COVID, you know, we, we have the option for retention, too. So there may be a retention clause. Uh, so there may be just a maintaining of certain levels. But, you know, sort of the equalizer is, um, and, you know, there's no set math to this, but I'm just going to give you an example. Like, let's just say you have a large company who is growing by, I, I don't know, 500 or 1,000 employees. They're obviously going to ask for a lot more than a smaller company would, right? If you're growing by 5 to 10, you obviously wouldn't be asking for, the level that a company growing by 500 to, you know, a thousand employees would, right? So that's sort of the equalizer. And, you know, you do get to make a case for why you're requesting the amount of credit you're requesting, but obviously you can see how there's, you know, some sort of correlation between how much you're going to get. Like, you know, you're not going to get, you know, $20 million for five employees, right? Um, so that's sort of the equalizer there. And as long as you can make a case for how this credit will be, you know, impactful in um, the creation of these new jobs, then that's sort of the critical component to the program. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. That's perfect. And I know that it's more of maybe a, a, a comment in the question, but I know that uh, Craig Casey uh, from uh, North County Auctions uh, is, uh, is I think Chris uh, looking for, uh, looking for a contact there uh, to think about how to maybe make some changes in his um, uh, lighting at the warehouse. So it seems like a really inappropriate thing there for, Chris or others to reach out to uh, their account executive and begin that process. Perfect. Any other questions that people might have in chat or if it's easier for you just to raise your hand, we're happy to take them. Uh, we're right at nine o'clock, but um, you know, we do have a little bit more time if people have any questions. I know this has been a lot of information uh, coming right at you. Perfect. Um, uh, perfect. Okay. Well, with, with that, um, I want to thank our speakers uh, for coming. Great information. Again, we're going to make this available as a link that everybody's going to get. Um, we're also going to send out the slide presentation to all our registrants and all our participants. So you have all that information along with all the live links, phone numbers, emails to follow up with. Um, we, I'm sure we'll do this again. Uh, these programs do change. As Chris mentioned, uh, sdg and &E is going through a transition, but as Rob's presentation also highlighted, um, the ETP program and opportunities to leverage it for training uh, grants um, are uh, ever-changing. Um, thank you for spending an hour with us on an early Tuesday morning. And again, uh, I just want to, on behalf of SD and EDC, uh, thank all our speakers. I want to thank our co-producer on this, uh, the Vista Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is, you know, one of the, uh, I'll say it's the best chamber in North County. So we love Vista uh, and the work that Rachel does. And again, uh, thanks everyone. And we'll be seeing you in emails with uh, the information.
Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Eric.